So our aim here is to look at the visual pathway. But to do that, we need a few names. And so I'm going to first introduce you to the, the um, we, we're going off, we're in teles, telencephalon land. We've left dorsal thalamus, and we're looking at uh, the telencephalon, which is the cerebral cortex. And I want to uh, highlight a few uh, anatomical terms. First of all, this is the front, this is the back. back. We have four lobes, four lobes that are obvious. One is the frontal lobe, separated by the central sulcus from the parietal lobe. And then back here is the occipital lobe. And then coming down here is the temporal lobe. And in each of these lobes, there is a primary cor cortex, a primary cortex. In the frontal lobe, the back part of the frontal lobe, just anterior to the central sulcus, is primary motor cortex. Just caudal to the central sulcus in parietal cortex is primary somatosensory cortex. Back here in occipital cortex, uh, in, in occipital lobe is primary visual cortex, most of which we're going to see is present on the medial surface of the hemisphere. A little bit of it peeks around on, on the convexity, but most of it's on the medial surface. And then up here in the superior temporal gyrus is primary auditory cortex. So we have motor, somatosensory, visual, and auditory functions. Those are the four visible lobes. People will also talk about the cortex that is contained deep within the sylvian fissure. And that is called the insular lobe. Not visible here. Here's the sylvian fissure. But, and, and the cortex that's on either side of that is called the insular lobe. So some other, uh, uh, let's now look at the medial surface to, to find some um, uh, landmarks there. So again, this is the front. This is the back. The uh, motor cortex peaks over the, uh, the convexity. And so the very medial parts of the uh, motor cortex, which are serving uh, the feet. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, not the feet, the saddle region, like the, the, the bum muscles and the back of the leg muscles. That this is all contained on this, uh, on this medial surface. And somatosensory cortex for the saddle region, for the back of the legs, is contained on, on the medial surface. Back here in, occipital, in the occipital lobe, you see this groove here. This is called the calcarine fissure or the calcarine sulcus. And primary visual cortex is present on either side of that. So here is the primary visual cortex on both sides of the calcarine fissure. Auditory cortex is not present here. You see here the, um, the corpus callosum and the gyrus that, com that, that just comes along the outside of the corpus callosum. This is the cingulate gyrus that we talked about last time as being part of, or, or a few times ago, as being part of the limbic system and also as being very important in learning and memory and in affect regulation as well. When we look past the, uh, the, the main part of the cerebral hemisphere and we look over to the temporal lobe, so this is now deep, you see the parahippocampal gyrus. There in the very front is the amygdala and behind that is the hippocampus. Other structure, another structure of import is, remember that uh, this, is, this is the dorsal thalamus, here is the hypothalamus, here's the mammillary body, here's the optic chiasm and the, um, and the stalk, the pituitary stalk. Okay. So when we look at somatosensory cortex, what we see is that there's a mapping of the of the body onto somatosensory cortex. And that mapping is, is the same in all of us. It goes from sacral regions most uh, medially on the medial surface of, of the uh, hemisphere, and then comes up to leg, hip, trunk, neck, wrist, hand, and then it comes over and it, and it um, carries information about the face. 
And what you see is that there are big areas that are given to somatosensory information from the digits and the thumb and to the lips, uh, both the upper lip and the lower lip and the lips together. So there are a few things to, to derive from this, um, from this organization. One is that the amount of space on your body that uh, is not represented um, in, in the brain. We use a whole lot more territory to uh, code for uh, the sensory input to our fingertips than we do to our entire trunk. Way more, not comparable. Why? Because we don't really care about what's coming into our trunk. We have very poor, what's called two-point discrimination, and the somatosensory cortex is all about two-point discrimination. So it's about being able to tell whether, some, whether you're touching burlap or, or silk. And what do you do that with? You don't do it with your trunk. You wouldn't be able to tell. You do it with your fingertips. And if you're telling, so what would you do if you, you're having a hard time you have calloused fingertips, and you're having a hard time telling which side of paper is matte and which side is glossy. Well, where would you put it? You'd put it on your lips, because your lips are, are about the same sensitivity as your fingertips. Both of them are highly sensitive, and both of them command a lot of brain territory. The other uh, important uh, uh, aspect, feature of this map is that it's, it's discontinuous. It's discontinuous, so it's not as though it's a it's a well-behaved map that that A is next to B is next to C is next to D and that's all we do. We jump around. So, for example, the upper lip is is uh, represented here and then also here as part of both lips. So there there's a jumping around and it's it's the context in which the uh, the the um, information uh, comes in. Okay, so this is the map for the somatosensory system, and this type of mapping is called somatotopy. This is somatotopy, and for the visual system, there is something called retinotopy. For the auditory system, there is tonotopy, and for the motor system, there is what's called a homun homunculus. So, uh, for example, uh, the movements of the arms are, are, are mapped. Movements of the, ar of the hands towards the mouth are mapped. Movements away from the, from the body are mapped. And so the, the homunculus is the motor map. Somatotopy is the somatosensory map. Retinotopy is the visual map. Tonotopy is the auditory map. And then are there maps for chemical senses? Are there maps for affect? We don't know. Uh, we, we simply do not understand enough about how they're coded. What we're going to do in the next section is examine the retinotopy and go deep into the visual field uh, organization, the visual pathways.